Okay, so what if I told you that you can text an AI on WhatsApp and it would actually feel like you're having a real conversation with a person? So not some basic chatbot. I'm talking about an AI agent that remembers you, that understands your voice, the images that you send, that it sends images back to you, that it, it sends voice notes back to you. It's, it's crazy, honestly. And in this series, I'm going to teach you how to build it. So let me quickly show you this in action. So we can just text her, hey, what are you up to right now? <laughs> and almost instantly we get a, a, an answer back, which is crazy. And, and we can also send her uh, audio messages. We can say, hey, and what are your plans for tomorrow? Do you have to go to work? And let's see what she answers back. And this might take just a little bit more because now we... Um, well, that, that's it. So that was super, super quickly. Um, gotta head to grow, gotta meet in about a new mini project, but at least this is crazy. So she just, in, what, what took like one or two seconds to transcribe the audio, process it, and just answer back to us, which is, which is amazing. And also something else that Ava can do is just to send you an audio if the conversation is kind of like asking for it, right? So maybe kind of like to force that, I can say something like, hey, can you explain to me in an audio what's that project like and again now uh, we are using 11 labs to generate the audio and then that audio is sent back to us in whatsapp which is amazing and we can just listen to it it's pretty cool we're working on a new quantum inspired <laughs> ml model i'll tell you more about it later don't want <laughs> so so that's crazy so she even answered back uh, with her own voice because actually we created a synthetic voice using 11 laughs and really this is just a sneak peek of what conversing with ava just feels like it and it feels like you're really talking with a person it's, it's crazy <laughs> and let's also have a look at this conversation that i had this morning with ava that felt surreal so first of all, I sent her an image of Ava, so the actual character that she's based on from the movie Ex Machina. And she already realized, right, she was able to process the image using uh, Lama 3.2 vision. She already understood that this might be a steal from a sci-fi movie. And then I mentioned to her, could this be from the movie Ex Machina? And then she said, yeah, exactly, the chick from Ex Machina, Ava, so Ava. No freaking way, that's my name too. Weird, so that's incredible, right? And then I just kept on talking about movies, right? And, and I asked, uh, and I mentioned something about, hey, which other movies do you like? And I'm a big sci-fi fan. And she mentioned another good movie that I actually like a lot, which is Annihilation. And just look at this, just, it felt so engaging, right? I then answered back, hey, isn't, isn't this from the same director, right? And then she said, Alex Garlan, yeah, he's a genius. Ex Machina and Annihilation, both mind-blowing films. This is just the kind of conversation that I want to have with my friends. I love talking about cinema and about sci-fi. And this felt so good, so natural. It's honestly crazy. <laughs> oh, and, and something else that Ava can do is to send you photos or realistic images of the activities that she's doing, right? For example, here, she was having ramen and then she was back to coding. So I asked, hey, can you send me a pic? And, and she did, and, and it looks amazing. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> but enough with the demo now. I'll, I'll leave you with the rest of the video. Enjoy. So in this first video of the series, we're going to do two things. One, we are going to understand the big picture of this project so that you can easily follow the next lessons in which we're going to go deeper into each component. And two, I'm going to explain you what is an AI agent for real. So <laughs> I promise you that by the end of this video, you will finally understand what an AI agent is. But before we get started, let me briefly introduce myself. So I'm Jesus Copado. I'm an AI machine learning engineer with more than five years of experience working in AI applications. And in this project, I've partnered up with Miguel Otero to give you all the resources so that you can build your own Ava, uh, your own WhatsApp agent. So we're going to be posting YouTube videos in this channel and also written form text via his newsletter. So if you're interested in the written form, just have a look at the description below where you're going to be able to sign up for his newsletter. Okay, so let's start with the project overview. So what we have here is a component diagram that Miguel has created and it's actually beautiful. So thank you for that, Miguel. And it shows the high-level flow of how this agent works. 
So let's now pay attention to the different parts of this diagram. So let's start by looking at the very center of this diagram, what we have here with Landgraf. This center of the diagram would represent Ava's brain. And as the next lesson is titled, so Ava's brain is just a graph. And as a graph, you're using nodes and edges to direct how Ava answers. And we, we will go deeper into that in the next lesson. I think it's going to be one of the best. Following the brain, what we have also is the memory, right? So Ava has two types of memory. It has a short-term memory. So that is the recent conversations or those recent messages. And also it has a long-term memory that actually for that we're using quadrant. And, and this long-term memory acts as ChatGPT. When you tell something important to Ava, something about your personal likes, about your your life story, about where you have been born, where you have where you are living right now, those those details that are important to you, those will be remembered by the long-term memory. And we will be having a look at that in lesson three. Following that, we are gonna, also going to see how Ava is also able to both understand your voice by using Whisper and also it can answer to you with a voice note and this voice note is created with 11 Labs, um, 11 Flash model that, that was just recently released. And also we're gonna explain you how Ava is able to use images, how Ava is able to see, to understand the images that you send to her and also how she can create images or send images that will look like photos. So for the understanding part of the image, we are using um, the vision, so the Lama 3.2 vision model, which is a vision language model that is able to process images. And we are using also Together, Together AI's endpoint, uh, the Flux1 Schnell endpoint that is actually free right now to generate those images. And finally, in the, in the very last lesson, we are gonna dig deeper into how the WhatsApp API works, which actually can be a bit tricky, and also how to deploy this whole application uh, using Cloud Run in, in Google Cloud. And I think that one of the coolest things about this project is that we have built it so that it's completely modular, so that you can just take one thing from here and just plug another one. So for example, the the language model that answers, that write the answers right now is a Llama 3.3 um, via Grok, but you can easily put another inference provider. You can easily, within, within Grok, you can change the model. For example, you could use the latest DeepSeq R1 a Llama 70 billion distilled model. So, so really you can potentially just take anything from here, the inference provider or the model itself and just put the one that you prefer. And now for the second and last part of this video, let's let's answer the question, what is an AI agent? Oh, and let me tell you, this is not my definition. This is the definition from Harrison Chase, uh, the founder of Langchain, which actually he created this um, amazing blog post uh, that I'm following right now for this explanation. And you should have a look at it. I'm going to put the link in the description below. So what is an AI agent then? So an AI agent is a system that uses an LLM to decide the control flow of an application. So that would be the direct answer to the question, but I think that is still a bit too technical and doesn't tell us much. So let's look at the following comment actually from Andrew NG, which is that rather than arguing over which work to include or exclude as being a true AI agent, we can acknowledge that there are different degrees to which systems can be agentic. This is like with autonomous vehicles. Uh, there are different degrees to, to which a vehicle is autonomous. So we have the same thing now with agents or, or this agentic nature of an application. And I think this table from Harrison Chase post, I think it sums it up amazingly. And I also added a, a couple of notes. So let's, let's have a look at it. But, but to finish up with this concept of agentic, just let's pay attention to what I have here. So a system is more agentic the more an LLM decides how the system can behave. And I think this sentence is key really to understand what an agentic system is. And I think it's maybe the, the sentence that sums it up, that sums everything up. But let's just have a look at the table now. So this table shows the levels of autonomy of agency that a system can have, right? And it's evaluated in levels from one to six, six being just the most autonomous or the most agentic. So those levels of agency would be the rows in this table. And just let's have a look at the columns here. So we have decide the output of each step, decide which steps to take, and decide what steps are available to take, right? So 
I'll explain you everything about this with a couple of examples and you would understand it well. So in level number one, we have just a code, a typical code application, right? So this is an example here. This is just every app that existed until 2022, um, until LLMs started. So here the output of every step is decided by the programmer, right? The human, right? We, we write code and we have conditionals, we have loops and, and we have just functions, right? But we always know what is the output, right? The human has decided that. And also which steps will continue after that first output that is also decided by the human. And also what is gonna happen in the whole application is also decided by the human. Then we have level two. So this is when we introduce an, a LLM call into our application. So here we have an app that uses an LLM to do something. Um, an example of this could be something like um, a summarization. Summarize this text into this bullet point. So the output of this function, of, 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 of this step, is going to be decided by the LLM. The LLM is going to do the summarization. So that would be level two. Now for level three, we introduce the concept of a chain. And a chain now is just multiple steps in a in a in, in the same workflow, right? In the, in the same so sequentially. An example of this could be a rag, so a retrieval augmented generation, which we do a semantic search, plus, for example, uh, using internet uh, an internet search query to enrich even more the context, right? So this whole thing would be um, level three. Now, as for level four, we start looking at the second column now the system of the app uses an LLM to decide what to do. And here, for example, is Ava. So Ava, um, so for Ava, we have also a router prompt that decides how, um, so in which form should Ava answer? Should she answer with a, with a message? Should she answer with an image? Or should she answer with, with, a, with an audio message? And that is decided by an LLM. Next up, we have the, the level number five, which would be a state machine. And here, the difference would be that we include cycles. So and here, the app would cycle until it finds the solution for a problem. So an example of this could be a text to SQL agent that retries, right? that, that computes um, um, a SQL query, runs it against the database. And if the answer is, um, is wrong or is not what expected, or if it has an error, then it would retry that, right? And it will cycle until the agent says, okay, this is enough, this is the query, or this is the answer to the query of the user, and then it outputs that. And finally, we have level six, in which we have a system that is completely autonomous. So that is that, one, the output of everything is just decided by the LLM, the step to take of which tool to use is also decided by the LLM, and finally, the LLM, or the yeah, this whole application would build its own tools. It would build these whole things that the, the, the system would uh, use. To sum it up, uh, the answer to what is an agent isn't really a definition by itself. It's just that we, that we have to reframe that into how agentic a system is. So that would be all for part one or uh, lesson one of this course AVA, the WhatsApp agent. And remember, these courses are going to be six lessons in total that we're going to post weekly every Wednesday to YouTube here in my YouTube channel and to uh, Miguel's newsletter. So if you want to be notified when we do so, you should subscribe and hit the notification bell. And as always, I'm going to leave links in the description below to everything important that I have mentioned in this video, including the link to the GitHub repo, because this course is open source. You can check the code right now. And I really think you're going to enjoy this course and you're going to be able to build really cool WhatsApp agents. Bye-bye and see you in the next one.